Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in the dojo today. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Now, if you're like me, I got tired of driving my car and uh, I wanted to try something new and different, so I checked out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used to drive a 2013 Prius, then I used the Fair Program and I got a really clean and spacious Hyundai Elantra with a great stereo system for $195 per week plus taxes. That includes everything, your rideshare insurance, and unlimited miles. And since Fair partners with Uber, you can earn a very strong bonus for a relatively low number of trips and pay for the car. This program is available in California for now, but there are programs all across the country. So check the Fair website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out. Download the Fair app and get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's our code, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right, all right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, before I start the show, I wanted to talk to you about Audible. If you sign up today, you can get a free audiobook from Audible. This week, I am highly recommending a great book that I recently read. It's a good book for entrepreneurs and anyone, you know, working on their plan B, kind of starting over again. It's called Reboot, Leadership and the Art of Growing Up by Jerry Colonna. I'm recommending that book. Uh, You can get that book for free if you sign up for Audible at therideshareguy.com forward slash Audible. You get a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook, so you could be listening to this book right now. Audible is great for drivers who want to learn on the road. So again, go to therideshareguy.com forward slash Audible and get Reboot, Leadership and the Art of Growing Up by Jerry Colonna. All right, let's start this show. Hey, everybody. I am pretty excited to bring you today's uh, episode. While you're out there driving in your cars, picking people up and dropping them off. Do you know I've done over 26,000 rides? 26,000 rides in less than four years. That's a ridiculous amount of work per week. Uh, So when you're tired worn out. You say, why the hell am I doing this? I get it. <laughs> I completely get it. And then yesterday I was on uh, the uh, YouTube live with uh, Harry and, you know, people were talking about their plan B and, you know, how things aren't going so great for being a driver and all of that. So I thought today I would share with you uh, eight, eight um, kind of like facts pieces of uh, knowledge that come from a book called Steal Like an Artist, 10 Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative by Austin Kleon. When I read this book, it was like, (laughs) boom, Uh, like my brain exploded. Because I had always thought that, you know, in order to be creative, I really need to think of something that's brand new, something nobody's thought of. And I wasted a lot of time, you know, really thinking I couldn't just take this from this person and this from this person and put it together and make it my own. And that's what this book is about. It's about creativity. And as you're, you know, thinking about your plan B and putting together whatever it is you're putting together, your exit plan, creativity is like vital, right? You need to be able to think of ideas. You need to be able to respond to situations that occur, 
right? Things are coming at you from the right and from the left. You got competition, you got problems, you got employees, you got whatever, expenses. And the more creative you can be, the better you can deal with this stuff. So this is the sound of me opening the book. It's a little book. It actually really is a little book. It's only, uh, let's see, does it even have page numbers? Yeah, it's only like 140 pages. Not that, uh, not that big, but, and it's got a lot of pictures too. So it's, it's great. You can actually get it and just sort of read it, you know, in, in one sit down. Um, so I highly recommend it. Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. And you can get that anywhere you, you can buy books. All right. And I do suggest you get it. You don't listen to it. You get the book because you're going to want to make notes. That's one thing about audiobooks I don't like is that I don't have anything to write down my notes. And I like to make notes and I like to underline things. And if I see a great quote, I like to circle it. Uh, so this is a, a great book to have for that, that reason. Okay, first, number one, nothing is original. All right. Uh, as this, it's got a quote here from David Bowie. The only art I'll ever study is stuff that I can steal from, right? The only art I'll ever study is stuff that I can steal from. So um, the writer, th this is, says nothing is original. That's the chapter title. The writer, writer Jonathan Lethem has said that when people call something original, nine out of 10 times, they just don't know the reference or the original source involved. What a good artist understands is that nothing comes from nowhere. All creative work builds on what came before. Nothing is completely original. Some people find this idea depressing, but it fills me with hope. As the French writer André Gide put it, everything that needs Everything that needs to be said has already been said. But since no one was listening, everything must be said again. Right? So the, the last quote on this little section here is, What is originality? Undetected plagiarism. That's a quote by William Ralph Ng. So this is good news. I guess that's what I want to say. This is good news. So if you're like me, this was a radical way of thinking about creativity because it gave me freedom to jump in and find out what everybody else was doing in the arena that I was interested in, right? And then I could take the best parts, right? The parts that resonated with me and take it and combine it into my own creation. So I found, I found this just like fantastic. All right, the next, uh, start taking notes, 21 to 22. So I guess I mentioned this a little bit earlier that I like to have a book um, where I can, I can uh, write stuff down. But what they're saying is, you know, carry something around. Like I carry this little black kind of like diary thing. And, uh, and I have a bunch of these pens, these uh, Signo pens. And I'm constantly writing, writing down things that I think, ideas, things that I see. Um, save your thefts for later. That's what this chapter is called. Uh, carry a notebook and a pen with you wherever you go. Get used to pulling it out and jotting down your thoughts and observations. Copy your favorite passages out of books. Record overheard conversations. Doodle when you're on the phone. All right? Uh, and there's a quote here from Mark Twain. It is better to take what does not belong to you than to let it lie around neglected. All right? So you have a good... Uh, you hear something and it, it resonates with you, grab it, right? Just grab it and take it um, and write it down, write it down. You know, I do a daily podcast and that's where a lot of my ideas come from or just little things that a passenger might say to me or something that I heard on a TV program or something that I read in a book and I'll just make notes. So get used to uh, writing stuff down, not typing on a, on a keyboard, but using your hand and writing stuff out. And that seems to stimulate a lot more creativity than just sitting down in front of a keyboard. Okay, page 28. Creativity show up, creativity shows up. So this is the, the old um, 
it's old to me. Uh, who was it? Chuck Close, the writer uh, Chuck Close. Uh, somebody asked him, you know, what about what about inspiration? And he said, inspiration is for amateurs. He said, he said, I'm a professional. I show up every day and I do the work. And by showing up every day, by showing that that discipline, the creativity, the ideas just start to know to show, to show up too. So the, the the lesson here is that it's there, there's no magic sauce, right? That artists work hard, uh, that writers work hard, that you know the entrepreneur, you, the 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 person with the plan B works hard by showing up, by going at it every single day. It's not, uh, again, it's kind of like consistency over intensity. Um, so this, this, uh, this is what they say right here. Guess what? None of us do, okay? Let's see, the clinical definition is a psychological phenomenon in which people are unable to internalize their accomplishments. It means that you feel like a phony, like you're just winging it that you really don't have any idea what you're doing. And what they're talking about there is how it feels when you just have this amazing idea. It's like, where'd it come from? I didn't think of it, but it, it's sort of like it thinks you. Guess what? None of us do. Ask anybody doing truly creative work, and they'll tell you the truth. They don't know where the good stuff comes from. They just show up to do their thing every day. All right? So that's like something that you can control. You can show up every day. And if you get into that habit, uh, great things great things will start to come to you, all right? I mean, I can only, I can only speak to uh, myself like doing these podcasts every single week. Uh, there's no question that I'm going to do it. And sometimes I'm like, I got this inspiration and I know exactly what, I'm, what I want to do or I've got an interview. But then there are days like today, right? I just knew today I was going to have to do this podcast, and I didn't have any idea what the podcast was going to be about. So I kind of closed my eyes, and I thought about it, and I've always got a stack of books around, and I thought, this, is, this, this book was so powerful for me, I bet I could share this with, with drivers out there, with people in the gig economy who are interested in, their, in, in pursuing their plan B. This is like gold. This is what I'm sharing. So that's how this happened right? Um, but it wouldn't have happened unless I committed to showing up, you know, every single week to do twice a week this podcast and to do my Nomad Daily podcast every day. So it's kind of like by making a commitment, you kind of force yourself. And by forcing yourself, that's when things really start to start to happen. All right. 53, page 53, we're going to now step away from the screen. All right, step away from the man behind the curtain. So basically what this is all about is um, get get out, get out, get outside, do something. Don't spend all your time looking at the screen. Uh, here's a good uh, quote from John Cleese of Monty Python fame. We don't know where we get our ideas from. What we do know is that we do not get them from our laptops, Right. Um, so what they're saying is, uh, unplug, right? It's like in the movie, the matrix where, uh, the guy says to a Neo, maybe you just need to unplug. So he does unplug. He goes to that. He follows the white rabbit. He goes to the nightclub. He meets Trinity and his whole life changes and he becomes the one. And before you know it, he's flying through space. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying you're going to be flying across continents, but, uh, unplugging and getting out of nature uh, is very uh, a powerful uh, catalyst for creativity. Here's a quote from Edward Tufte. These are all quotes from the book. Um, I have stared long enough at the glowing flat rectangles of computer screens. Let us give more time for doing things in the real world. Plant a plant. Walk the dogs. Read a real book. Go to the opera. All right. Unplug. Great advice. All right, what's next? Page 82. Put some work out there. It's easy now that we have the internet. All right, page 82. 
Okay. So this, uh, what this section is about is that with the internet now, it's easy to write something, to take a picture of something and put it out there for public consumption. Never has it been easier. I mean, here I am talking in my room, right, uh, at my desk. Uh, I've got, you know, this Audacity program recording my voice. And next week, this is going to be consumed by, you know, thousands of people. So it's pretty remarkable how easy it really is. Um, here's, here's one of the lines. You don't put yourself online only because you have something to say. You can put yourself online to find something to say. So I'm going to repeat that because this is so important. You don't put yourself online because you have something to say. You can put yourself online to find something to say. The internet can be more than just a resting place to publish your finished ideas. It can also be an incubator for ideas that aren't fully formed, a birthing center for developing work that you haven't started yet. So this is like really uh, a powerful distinction. So you're not sure what you want your plan B to be, right? Let's say that's you. You know you've got something to say. You know you've got something you want to do. You've got a skill you want to share, but you're not quite sure you know, exactly what it is or how to present it. So you just start sharing about where you're at with the whole process and you put it out there and you're going to start to get some feedback and you're going to start to read your own words or hear your own voice and you're going to go, huh, okay, that really resonates with me, that not so much. I'm going to go in this direction. And then you're, you're, you're tweaking and, and you're moving forward. And this is something that, can, that you can only do by getting your, your work out in front of people. I'm going to continue reading. A lot of artists worry that being online will cause them to make less work, but I found that having a presence online is a kick in the pants. Most websites and blogs are set up to show posts in reverse chronological order. The latest post is the first post that visitors see, so you're only as good as your last post. This keeps you on your toes, keeps you thinking about what you can post next. Having a container can inspire us to fill it. Whenever I become lost over the years, I just look at my website and ask myself, what can I fill this with? All right. So my recommendation for everybody is to uh, find a, a venue in which you can share something every single day. So you may not know, I have a, a daily podcast called Nomad Daily with Jay Crater, and it's about one minute long, one to one and a half minutes long. And it's just, a, a, you know, it's a thought, it's an idea, it's a it's a, something of value that I can share with, with my audience. And because I do it every single day, it's constantly uh, puts a fire under my ass. And as a result of that, I, I put it out. And then every once in a while, I get some feedback. Wow, Jay, that was really great. Or I don't really understand what you were saying there. Um, you know, and as the audience grows, I, I can see, okay, I'm, I'm making a connection. So uh, Seth Godin famously has been doing a, a daily blog. Uh, for years, for I think over 10 years, where every single day he writes a short three to four paragraph blog. And he's been doing it every single day, day after day for over 10 years. And in that process, he's built quite a tribe and he refines his ideas by putting it out there and, and getting feedback, client-driven feedback. So because we have the internet, all of this is possible. All right. Okay. Page 102. This is so awesome. This is so great. <laughs> it's great for me to re be reminded of all these things uh, as I'm going through this with you today. Stand next to talent. So what this is saying is um, hang out with people who have uh, something you want to attain. Um, have uh, Spend time with people where you can learn, right? Um, here, here's uh, Questlove, who's the... Uh, I think he's the band leader for uh, the Jimmy uh, Fallon on The Tonight Show. Um, the only mofos in my circle are people that I can learn from, okay? So in other words, he only surrounds himself by people um, he can learn from. So this chapter starts with, remember, garbage in, garbage out. You're only going to be as good as the people you surround yourself with. In the digital space, that means following the best people online, the people who are way smarter and better than you, the people who are 
doing the really interesting work. Pay attention to what they're talking about, what they're doing, what they're linking to. Okay? So I find this to be so true. And lately I've really committed to hanging out with people uh, who are up to doing something. I've made a, a trip to uh, San Diego last uh, two weeks ago to hang out in what's called a mastermind with uh, other people who are starting a coaching business. And then I'm going down again into next week to hang out with, uh, with some people. Um, and the purpose is to just, you know, uh, come up with ideas and fine tune our work and, and, and better present the stuff out, out to the public. So hang out with uh, people, hang out with talent, hang out with people where you can, you can learn something. Okay, we're down to our last two. Page 118. Take care of yourself so you can be bold. Uh, the quote here is from Gustave Flaubert, famous author. Be regular and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work. I just love, I love that quote. Be regular and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work, right? Uh, still waters run deep. It's another way of saying that. Um, so they're saying t- take care of yourself, right? Eat well, be healthy, uh, d- try stay away from drama, right? Have relationships that work. And from that, that wellspring of, of contentment, you can like go nuts, you know, you can really come up with some great stuff, some bold, innovative ideas and, uh, and, and, and just launch it out into the world. So again, I'm going to read this quote because I think it's so great. Be regular and order, orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work. It's fantastic. Okay, 137, the last part. And this is like saving the best for last, I got to say. Um, this title is called Choose What to Leave Out. Okay. Um, in this age of information abundance and overload, those who get ahead will be the folks who figure out what to leave out so that you can concentrate on what's really important to them. Nothing is more paralyzing than the idea of limitless possibilities. The idea that you can do anything is absolutely terrifying. The way to get over creative block is to simply place some constraints on yourself. I get this. It seems contradictory, but when it comes to creative work, limitations mean freedom. So I am creating right now a coaching program. And originally, my vision was a a six-month program, and it was going to cost $9,000 and And it had, you know, everything in the kitchen sink in it, right? And as I started to share it with some of my coaches and people whose opinions I respect, it became very clear that that I needed to simplify it down to what's the essence of what what is the essence of the gift that I have to give? And 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 I, I was like, huh. Okay, and I kind of resisted that, you know, resisted it very much. But now that I read this and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. So, um, so what what this chapter is saying is that simplify it down, whittle it down to its bare essence, and that's when you're going to have this creative explosion, right? Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, and then boom. And I'm starting to experience that myself uh, in the creation of this program, which at some point I'll, I'll launch to the public. But um, it's just a r- remarkable uh, concept. It's almost con- it's it does it's not, it's counterintuitive. Um, you think of creating, you know, big multifaceted, you know, uh, um, like that. But this that's not what that's not what how it really works. Um, the way to get over creative blocks is to simply place some constraints on yourself. It seems contradictory, but when it comes to creative work, limitations mean freedom. All right. So I don't expect you to to, to grasp everything that I just I shared with you. Um, what I do hope is that you go out and you get this book called Steal Like an Artist. 
uh, by Austin Kleon, K-L-E-O-N, because I just I just shared with you eight eight of the topics and ideas, and there's you know a hundred more that are in this book. So check it out, and I hope you got some value. Uh, I'm sure you did. You, you could not listen to that and not pick up an idea or two, particularly as it pertains to either how you run your business as a driver or as you put together ideas for a plan B, you know, and, or if you're, you know, uh, you're going towards your plan B, uh, it's giving you some ideas of ways that you can be more effective, more efficient, and more creative um, in it so that you can make more money in less time and, and, and really do the things you want to be doing. All right? Drivers, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much for uh, joining me. And uh, I will see you next week. Y'all got to have a great day and be safe out there. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode. And you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best. Here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.